Welcome back. Ed Martin here on Pro America Report. Our old friend, Julie Kelly, the author, the author of the book, Disloyal Opposition, How the Never Trump Right Tried and Failed to Take Down the President. It's uh, out on hardcover, hardback, uh, July 7th, about a week from, I think it's a week from Monday, maybe a week from Tuesday. Uh, Anywhere you get books, you can get some. And uh, I have seen a, um, what do they call it, a pre-publication copy. It's really good. And the only thing I'd say is you better hurry up, Julie, because you're going to have to add chapters. All these Never Trumpers, they're like, they're going crazy is there car is carly fiorina in the in the in the book she is not in it um and i i know she came out and supported biden this week big surprise i i don't know yeah. why she thinks that that would matter if she has no influence but uh yeah, yeah. we definitely are going to need a sequel <laughs> because a lot <laughs> happened since the end of publishing or you know since we cut it off in early february till now who would have thought yeah. all of this would have transpired oh. It's am- it's amazing. It's amazing. But Julie, so, Julie, um, what's your thoughts now when you l- – l- let me ask it this way. You've observed up close. So we're talking with Julie Kelly, and her book is called Disloyal Opposition. And so it looks at these never-Trumpers, mostly in the Republican Party, you know, and you know the names Bill Kristol and some of these others that have, have never come across and said, hey, I can handle tax cuts, I can handle good judges. They're just stuck there. But what do they do when they see – like Biden and Obama, Comey and Yates in these notes, like plotting against a, a you know the, the incoming president. How do they ignore that? I mean, do you ever wonder what are they, they just like? Oh, oh no, that, that can't be. That doesn't matter. Isn't it amazing? It is. And I'll tell you, Ed, this was one of the things early on as this scandal started to unfold and watching Republicans, not just never Trump Republicans, we see this with Republicans in the Senate right now who are continuing to ignore this and justify it. They actually justified it, right? They think that there was some legitimacy to investigating Mike Flynn, that he had these sketchy uh, ties to the Kremlin and he went to some dinner and sat near Putin and, you know, all the manufactured evidence that uh, Obama's Justice Department concocted against the Trump campaign. So they continue to defend it. They continue to justify it. Um, And uh, what is Republican or conservative about wielding the most powerful law enforcement tools against a political opponent? There's nothing Republican or conservative about it, Uh, but they continue to defend it. And I have a chapter in my book about it. Oh, good. I was going to. I was going to say, is the is the. But I guess what I'm. What I want. What I wonder, really, is it. Um, is it sour grapes? Is it actually sort of like mental health block? Is it arrogance? I mean, what what do you really think? Some people. Some people are seem like they actually are not. They're not able to handle it. But other people are they just sort of arrogant, or or is it maybe is this a thing where they're really not conservative anymore? They're not. They never were, but they're not Republican anymore, and this is the way they take it out on everybody. I think it's all of the above. Um, I think some of them are just sore losers and they want to be proven right even five years later that they were right about Donald Trump. I think some of them had pretty much washed up careers and this was a way to revitalize their career. I mean, we're talking about political consultants who haven't won a race in decades. <laughs> you know, we're going back to McCain, one of McCain's uh campaign manager. I mean, these people are basically losers. They're failed publication uh, editors, they're failed columnists, they're failed political strategists. So this is a way, in some regards, to revitalize their careers. Also, Ed, a lot of them are neoconservatives. These are the war uh, mongers, right? These are the people who worried about nation building in the Middle East while towns in the Middle West were being decimated by their policies. Um, And so this is a way for them to curry favor with the left. We just saw this with John Bolton, right? John Bolton was a war criminal, was a war criminal to the left and the Democrats and the media for years. Now, all of a sudden, he's a big resistance hero and they're giving him primetime air uh, to, to talk about his grudge, his grievances and grudges against the president. So this is how they get attention. It's how they get fame. It's how they sell books. Um, you know, Bolton is a great example of that. And all the never Trumpers I talk about in my book have done the same thing. We're talking with we're talking with Julie Kelly and uh, Julie Kelly on Twitter is at Julie underscore Kelly two and on Parlor she's at Julie Kelly which is really fun and exciting for me. Uh, but and the book she wrote is called Dis- Disloyal Opposition. Um, Julie, you watched politics for a long time. You certainly watched closely in fifteen and sixteen. You now we're now seeing a parade of. 
polls and stories about how Biden's pulling ahead and mm-hmm. the president is trailing, everything is going wrong, and now and and not being you know, rose colored, not being rose colored glasses. So, what are you? What's your sense of it? And you're out in the Midwest. You sort of have a feel for that, especially where you live. I mean, what's your feel for what is? Is this possible that Biden is actually doing better? Is it that it's just hard to be president in a coronavirus? What do you feel about the politics right now? Um, you know, I was looking at some of the polls. I definitely think the president had a bad week. Um, I was looking at some of the more recent polls. Biden is ahead anywhere between, you know, you, around eight points. Um, some of these polls, again, favor uh, Democrats. I was looking at one this morning, a reliable one, the uh, Marist uh, Monmouth poll. And um, it favors Democrats sample by seven points. Uh, and so there's an eight point spread. Um, but look, Biden's strategy is working. He's staying in the basement. He's facing no tough questions. <laughs> I have a piece up today on American greatness. We now know that Joe Biden, despite his lies and denials in the past, was a central was centrally involved in the framing and targeting of Mike Flynn. So we know from notes released this week again that that's true. He's faced no questions about it. He's hiding in his basement. He had some event in Pennsylvania with, like, you know, three people there, took no uh, 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 questions from the media. So when you're hiding out like that and you have a president in one year who's undergone impeachment, a pandemic, and now uh, nationwide riots and race war, I'm surprised the guy's even at 40 percent, to be honest. So... Um, right. But he needs to fight back. And I'll tell you, Ed, and I was ranting on tri- Twitter about this just now. He has no support from Republicans in the Senate. Uh, they really are disgraced to this party, uh, nearly up and down the line. He can't really do anything bold because he knows that the leaders in Congress don't have his back. They really don't. And so he's, right. he's got to just come out fighting on his own, do what Trump does best. Um, and so I feel like he'll be able to regroup, but he's definitely on the ropes this week. I, I have no doubt about that. We're, we're talking with. Yeah, we're talking with Julie Kelly and your piece over at American Greatness. I'm glad you slid to it because I want to ask you the title of it is Obama and his gang of untouchables re- refers famously to the untouchable movie where and, and the echo that Obama did in 2008 when he said, if they bring a knife to the fight, we bring a gun. And, and I just want to say I don't even want to talk. I've talked on the show over and over for the last two or three days about how insane the notes are that Strzok took at the time that Biden suggested Logan Act, Obama says use the right people. But I want to ask you this, Julie. Again, you've been around the, the, the journalistic block for a long time. Mm-hmm. Nobody, you wrote about it, nobody's covering it. I mean, imagine if there were handwritten notes of an FBI agent from a Dick Cheney attended meeting with George W. Bush in January of 2009, where they said, hey, look, uh, here's what we can do with O'Biden. Let's get that whatever. I mean, it's incredible. And, it, and, and then here's the thing that drives me crazy. And then Comey, Yates, Obama and Biden, Clapper and Brennan and, 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 and McCabe, they lied about it for years they, they knew there was nothing there, and they lied about it for years. Nobody's saying a word. This is what I wrote in my piece yet again. Um, in any other time, journalists and editors would be clawing each other's eyeballs out, right? They would be standing <laughs> day right. after day in front of Obama's mansion in Washington, D.C. They all work in D.C. They would be standing out there. You know, they would want comments from every Democratic Party leader and donor. You know, what does this say about the former president and the current candidate for president? There's not. Well, but we know why. It's not that they're covering it up. The media was a set was essential to carrying out the collusion right. hoax. Right. Starting exactly right. almost four years ago this month. And so they can't tag Obama and his people because they were a part of it. And so here we have President Obama has not faced a single question about what he knew, what his involvement was. We know that as late as early as August 2016, James Comey talked to Barack Obama in the White House about the Trump campaign investigation that came out of the Horowitz report. Now we have these notes. Obama has... <laughs> Not only has Obama not fielded one question, he had the gall this week to go after Bill Barr and accuse Trump's Justice Department of doing the president's personal bidding. It's astonishing. But he can get away with saying that because he's never been held one second accountable for what he did. 
Well, and also the trick of the left is you accuse the you accuse the other side of what you do. You know, I mean, you, right. the, the, you, you say you're ra- the, the left says you're racist when it's the left that's racist. I mean, there's not there's nothing close to what the left does to, you know, hyphenated Americans and how they treat them. And, you know, Biden's Biden's campaign uh, comment to uh, uh, Charlemagne, the ding dong about, hey, you know, if you don't if, if black people don't know whether to vote for Trump or me, they're not black. I mean, this is insane. So they're racist. They call us racist and they they commit the, you know, the uh, abuse of, of power and then they say oh look at the abuse of power it's like wait and you know susan rice is sending i mean i love this this is like amateur hour you send an email to yourself on the last day saying we did everything by the books i told the truth i really am a good person have a great day i mean golly it's amazing anyway well julie kelly congratulations on your uh, really great that. name on part on par- on parlor you know it's really great it's going to be super people are going to follow you for that reason alone the book is disloyal opposition out next week and come back on again and tell us more about what's going on okay i will and thanks for all your support i appreciate it all right thanks julie we'll talk uh, we'll be right back it's ed martin here in the pro america report be back in a moment 